the stigma that has been associated with the One Project, I believe, has always been from people who've never attended. All the things I want people to talk about, and they're finally addressing it. Words are good, but what changes? Jesus owed to unite you. That's like the one thing we all have in common. Eight years ago, the One Project burst onto the scene with a simple call, celebrate the supremacy of Jesus Christ in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In order to share this message, the gathering utilized trending modes of communication, short TED style talks, contemporary worship, and intimate roundtable discussions. But the movement has faced controversy. The One Project and its founders have been continually criticized by conservative publications, and the gathering was investigated by church leadership. In early 2018, the founders were ready to move on and officially ended the One Project. However, Late last year, the memo was sent out. The One Project was back. We're here in Redlands, California for this weekend's event. Its theme is Before All Things. I've never been to one before, so I'm excited to experience it. I also want to ask the leadership why they decided the One Project needed to come back and whether they have any new goals moving forward. We had worked to end the One Project last year. It had been seven years and we had had countless gatherings around the world. And so we were kind of tired, frankly, and ready to, to put it to rest. It was time. But we kept hearing from so many people. I, I think it was sad that the One Project felt it needed to end for a while. But I think that uh, it's really important that the One Project is back this year. We knew there needed to be a response from us to some of the things we saw happening in our denomination, our tribe, our family. Prior to the One Project's return, Seventh-day Adventist Church leadership approved a policy to address non-compliance, a decision appearing to single out church divisions that ordained women into ministry. Do you feel like this event that we're at is a response to the decisions that have been made in the last two years at the Annual Council? And maybe what has happened has kind of revived uh, the, the need for the One Project. Um, especially when people are feeling alienated or isolated, it's so important. And so I'm, I'm grateful that they decided to uh, bring us back together again. I don't think that this is a direct response like, you did this, so we're going to checkmate you with a One Project. But I think there was just a sense of people saying, we still want to be together. We need, as an Adventist church, to continue to remember that our center, our core, is not our beliefs. It's not our lifestyle. It's not our churches. It's not our schools. As wonderful and as important as those are, our center, our core, is Jesus. Despite the positive feedback, not everyone praised the One Project's return. Saturday night, um, you know, somebody put bunch of stuff on our windshields saying, you know, essentially that we're heretics, so. The stigma that has been associated with the One Project, I believe, has always been from people who've never attended. Because if you come, you know what it is. And when people go, well, what do you do? We talk about Jesus. That's it? Yes. Only Jesus? Yes. Well, how many? That's it? Yes. And we were called out again um, by being, uh, try, that, that somehow we're being nefarious, somehow we're the end time deception. And what breaks my heart about all of those comments is that they're all from a, a place of fear. We're so afraid uh, in our denomination of being deceived. We're so afraid of what the devil's up to. The problem with that is we spend a lot more time, it seems like, trying to figure out what the devil's up to and how the devil is trying to trick us than we do what Jesus is up to and what Jesus is calling us in our lives. Across the two-day long event, a collection of pastors, teachers, and scholars spoke, each followed by a facilitated town hall discussion. Notably, Dr. Timothy Golden's presentation received the most vocal support. And we walk around saying things like, theology should not be political. And then in the next breath, we say things like, Pastor, do you have my Sabbath accommodation letter? Wow. <laughs> Wait a minute. You mean, the? oh, I get it. Theology is not supposed to be political except when it benefits me. Okay. Okay. 
Timothy Golden is just uh, one of the brightest minds that we have right now in the Adventist Church thinking through the issues of ethics and how we apply ethics to the real world. And I think you saw today just powerfully, you know, uh, spoke to those issues and helping us think about, well, how do we live out Christianity in the way of Jesus in a practical uh, way? Some, some Christians will say, some Adventists will say, you know, don't get political with Christianity or with Jesus, when in reality, when you look at the real Jesus in real actual history, like, he's a political guy. God becomes historical in order to save us. He becomes subjected to socioeconomic limitations. He becomes subjected to uh, hunger. He becomes subjected to oppression. If, if God is that attentive to history, then who are we to dehistoricize Christ? And I think whether we're black or white, if Christ is really before all things, then we have to pay attention to who he was. As a young generation, I know we are really striving to be more active for our community. And what does that mean for us in terms of politics? How do we handle ourselves when we talk about like the wall or illegal immigration, things like that, difficult topics, but we as a generation want to talk about. We're not always able to have these open discussions in our church with mm. our friends, with our families, and just having a place to sit down and talk about what we're actually feeling about this. And I think it's really spectacular, really rare. Being able to come together to talk about those things that make us feel uncomfortable um, allows us to be vulnerable, but to remind each other that we're all human. We all have these doubts, we all have these questions at the end of the day. We all serve oh, the same God. It's everything I wanted in a church. It's every, all the things I want people to talk about and they're finally addressing it. It's, that's wonderful. Okay, so to see like an older generation or like being a huge support of what we were doing, that was really the big inspiration for me this week and I took away. Like I've never seen that before and so it was really exciting to see that. So we all understand things differently, we all need different means of communication, and the more opportunities we have to hear different people talk about the same thing. In a sense, the more one project you can have, the better it is for people who are trying to engage with Christianity, engage with Jesus. This iteration of the One Project received overwhelming support from young adults and seniors. But it remains to be seen how the choice to champion Jesus first will affect the broader church culture. Do you hope that the One Project continues after this year? I hope the One Project continues for as long as it's needed. And I also hope that other iterations of this experience will, 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 will grow. The, the One Project leaders are aware that we are all about eight years older than when we were when it started. And we really would love to see the next generation pick up this mantle. In the future, will there be a one project? Hopefully not. Two, we don't know. Right now, what's going to happen next year? We do know there'll be something, because the five of us are always cooking something up. But I hope some people have felt like this, this reminded us. This reminded us of what we're supposed to be about.